Hello everyone, this is Dipali and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we will be talking about creating time types. If you happen to be new to my channel, please consider subscribing down below. Hit the bell icon to get notifications on my new videos. Without further ado, let's get started. In order to create time types, you need to have access to manage data. The permissions for the manage data can be checked in the role that is assigned to you. Go to manage permission roles and select the role that you are assigned to. In the metadata framework, you should have access to manage data. So once you have access to manage data, you will type in manage data in the actions. And here you will start getting the option manage data. I'm already under manage data and I would want to create a new time type. In the create new, you can type time type and here are all the fields that we need to define in order to successfully create our time type. External name. External name can be any name that you want to give to your time type. Say for example, I'll create a time type db underscore annual leave unit. In this case, we have two options, hours or days. This would define that what time unit your time type will accept values in say for example this particular time type can record times only in unit hours so if you want to record one day of absence against this time type db annual leave then it would record as your one day then it will consider eight hours for example if your one day is defined as eight hours it will consider eight hours as an absence for one day and not one single day country or region is defined when you want to define or restrict this particular time type for any specific country so this is to make the time type country specific if your time type is generic across all the countries your organization is placed in just leave this blank classification could be attendance absence on call or break so this defines whether your time type is eligible or would be recording attendance time types or absence time types. In this case, I will just leave it as absence. Workflow configuration. Here we have three options for workflow configuration. One is workflow configuration, activate, cancellation workflow and admin workflow configuration. In the workflow configuration, we can assign different workflows. This would mean that if the employee records an absence against the time type DB annual leave, it will go for workflow. There are two workflows that can be triggered or not triggered depending upon how we want to configure. The workflow which is assigned in the workflow configuration is triggered when the employee is recording an absence himself. This is more of a self-service scenario. Admin workflow configuration triggers when the admin is recording an absence on behalf of an employee. It again depends on us whether we want the workflow to be triggered when the admin is recording an absence or not. Active cancellation workflow means that if the employee or the admin cancels the leave request, should the workflow be triggered? I can either set it to yes or no. On the cancellation of any leave, if I don't want the workflow to trigger, I will just set it as no. And if I set it as yes, it will trigger the same workflow, which is being triggered either by the employee or by the admin, depending upon who has canceled the absence, right? If an employee is canceling the absence, it will trigger the cancellation workflow, which is under workflow configuration. And if the admin cancels, then it will trigger the workflow which is under admin workflow configuration. Permitted fractions for unit days would mean that this particular time type is applicable to book only full days, half days or quarter days. So if my day comprises of eight hours and if I say that only full day bookings allowed, I will not be able to book an absence against DB annual leave for half day or quarter day. If I select half day bookings allowed, the system will allow to book for half day as well as full day. 
if I select quarter day booking allow, then quarter bookings are also allowed. Say for example, one fourth of eight hours would be two hours. So I should be able to book an absence for two hours. Permitted fractions for unit hours. So this is the same as what we saw for permitted fractions for unit days. The only difference is we will have to specify permitted fraction for unit days if my unit is days and I will specify permitted fraction for unit hours if the time type unit is hours. Leave of absence, event reason, plan leave of absence, event reason, return to work. So leave of absence is an absence, say for example, the employee is on maternity leave or maybe has taken a sabbatical leave or a long term leave. An event reason is defined which tells the system that the employee has gone on leave and is no longer active in the system for that period of time. There is another event reason which tells the system that the employee has now returned to work and these event reasons are created in the system and assigned here as per our scenario. It is a separate lengthy topic and we will be discussing about it in a separate video. Duration display according to work schedule, calendar days or deduction quantity. So what is work schedule? Work schedule is just a pattern of work that the employee comes to work. Say for example, if I am employed five days a week and eight hours every single day. So my work schedule repeats every week. So that is my work schedule. And it will not include my weekends, which is in my case, Saturday, Sunday and calendar days would include the weekends as well on and it will include all the seven days of the week. Deduction quantity display duration according to deduction quantity. Let's see here. What is deduction quantity? So it says that if an absence counting method is assigned, you can choose the deduction quantity option to display the quantity that is deducted from the time account. We will also have to understand what is an absence counting method. So these are different scenarios like leave of absence and we can take that separately. In this video, we are focusing on creating a basic time type and understanding how does it work. Absence class unspecified or sickness. Sickness is defined for specific countries like Germany and Spain. They have separate rules for the sickness time type and in this case I would leave it as unspecified. Undetermined end date is set to no and we can specify that the end date of our absence is not determined. It says with no fixed end date. Requesting or non-working days allowed, we can mark it as yes or no. So if my work schedule says that my non-working days are Saturday, Sunday and if I mark yes here, the system will allow me to record an absence on a non-working day and this includes the public holidays as well. Accrual recalculation relevance. So this is again a payroll concept. So what happens is when any time type is marked as recalculation relevance, this particular time type is picked up for recalculation if there are any mismatches in the two systems, the employee central and the payroll system. Otherwise, this time type will not be picked. So I will not mark it as recalculation relevance. I will just leave it as is. Collision grouping. These are those cases where I have a time off and a timesheet being booked on a same day and also the same hour. So it's like Say for example, on a Monday from 9 to 12 a.m. there is a time off and on the same day and the same time there is a time sheet booking as well. So collision groupings define how the time off and the time sheet on the same day are considered. So this is again a time sheet concept. Let's proceed ahead. Balance calculation setting. There are two options here. Consider booking after calculation date and consider bookings until calculation date and these balance calculations come into picture. It says the consider booking until calculation date setting includes all positive and negative bookings until the as of date. You might be thinking what are positive and negative bookings. In case of positive bookings, the employee has to record all the time that he is working in the company. There are no exceptions to it. In case of negative booking, only the Delta recordings are done. It is assumed that the employee is working from 9 to 5 or as per the work schedule. And if there are any exceptions like he's on site or he's on leave or attending any specific meetings or trainings, only those recordings are done. Otherwise, there is no need for the employee to record every single 
minute or hour of his day that is done in the positive recordings it considers all the bookings until the corresponding calculation date as well as the negative bookings after that date in this case those negative bookings will also be offset against simulated or posted positive bookings if possible for further details please take a look at the field description in the time of implementation guide so basic calculation settings consider booking after calculation date and consider bookings until calculation date absence retention group this again is a concept of data privacy these absences would be retained by the system and will not be purged until it is defined next is posting priority it says post to time account by defined time account period and post to time account by posting rules only the option by posting rules only is mostly used and this is used to post the values of the absences in the corresponding time account so if i have a time account type i can assign here else i can just leave it blank for now and what are time account types say for example i get 20 days of annual leave every year it depends upon how i accrue accrual would mean the posting of the quota to my account say for example i get 20 days in one year and i apply an annual leave against the time type that i just created and i have applied only one day of time type so the quota from my account should get deducted and the value should become 19 so specifying the time type here would define that this particular time type deduction should happen from which time account as of now i'll just leave it blank we also have the option to specify take rules. Take rules are the absence validation rules and can be used to validate or restrict maybe to throw an error warning or an info message when an employee does a time recording against this particular time type. For example, I do not want the employee to book more than three consecutive days at a stretch against this time type then i can create a take rule and add it here so whenever the employee would record an absence using this particular time type for more than three consecutive days at a stretch the system will throw an error so in the external code i'll just give the same as the external name and then we have the last field called as accrual relevance to stop accrual if you want to stop the accruals to the time account then you can set it to yes else just leave it blank i'll just click on save and i have two errors here the external code should not be longer than 10 characters and please select permitted fraction for unit hours okay so permitted fraction for unit hours is a mandatory field since my unit here is hours i get the error to select permitted fraction for unit hours if I just change this to day and try to save, it says please select the permitted fraction for unit days. So this is just to show you that the system identifies what permitted fraction field you have to mention depending upon the unit that is selected in the unit field. So I'll just select only full day bookings allowed. And the other error was, so if you see here, the error has gone and the other error which says that the external code should not be longer than 10 characters are you sure you want to continue so it is talking about this external code down below and now if you see it has become a warning message there were two error messages that were coming before so here the system will identify the error or give us the error message even if there is only one error message out of the multiple messages that we receive now it has changed to warning sign and then we can click on yes and ignore that so this is how we create time types in the system and these time types can then be assigned to the time profiles we will see those in later discussions in different videos and we will also try to create all the time related objects and book an absence on the objects that we have created. So thank you so much for watching the video. I hope it was helpful for you. Do remember to check my other videos and you can also check the link which you are seeing on the screen. Please do comment in the comment section if you're looking for any specific topics in the employee central area. See you soon in my next video. Thank you. Bye for now.